guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today I just felt like I needed to do something and I've been very very busy lately um, and I thought today I would make a little cloche terrarium um, as a gift for my husband for when he comes home from the hospital. Uh, cloche is a glass dome that fits over a base and they're great for making terrariums. I've never actually made one before um, but I figured why not. I picked up this little cloche from Home Depot, I think, or maybe it was even my garden store on clearance over the summer, and have always had intentions to do something with it and just haven't gotten to it. Uh, so I thought today would be the day. I've gathered together a bunch of supplies. Um, I stopped by my garden center and all of the terrarium stuff was on clearance, so it's like it was meant to be. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make a soil mix real quick. And then we're going to play around with some plants and see what I can make. Uh, and hopefully this will turn out to be nice and cheerful and bright and beautiful. Um, but it's certainly given me something to do, which I desperately needed today. Um, so we're going to start by making my soil. Um, you could certainly use any sort of closed container. If you watch uh, Tanner on Serpent Design, you'll see he has tons and tons and tons of ideas of different... Um, vessels that you can use to make cool terrariums. I find those videos really inspiring, which is why I think I'm making this one today. Um, so we're going to start with a soil mix. Um, and I always mix my own soils rather than buying the pre-made. I feel like you can uh, cater to the needs of the plants better that way. Um, in a terrarium, you want to be cautious that, you know, it stays nice and moist, but that it has good drainage. So I'm going to do a mix of sand, sphagnum moss, a little bit of mulch, um, and some potting soil and, and make a nice light soil that will be well draining but also maintain its humidity well. Um, so we're going to start with, it. this is just some black aquarium sand that I had in the fish room. I'm going to do equal parts of uh, potting soil, sand, mulch, and then add some charcoal to keep things kind of fresh in there since it's a closed system. And then mix in probably about twice the amount of sphagnum just to give it that airiness. Um, so I could have used uh, carbon from the fish tank stuff, but I, I didn't actually have any. And this again was on clearance at the the nursery so I'm just going to add some of that in there I guess I should measure if I'm setting a good example um, I'm not going to need all of this but I can just keep the mix around I have a bunch of these little glass things all over the place um, that I pick up whenever I see them on sale uh, a lot of times hardware stores or the nurseries will will have them go on sale seasonally um, and I'm just going to use an organic potting mix. Now this is one that's been floating around the fish room forever, so it's pretty dry. I'm going to have to hydrate it. But it should break up fine and work out great. I'll just spray it down with some water here in a bit. Let it absorb. I'm making way too much soil. Um, and then I'll just grab some of the sphagnum. Um, I always have this on hand. This is what I use as well to pot my orchids in. It does really well for them. Um, different people have different opinions on that, but for me, it's an easy way to um, maintain and gauge the moisture of my orchids, so it's my preference. I'm just going to mix this up. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to add some water to it because it's super dry, and then it'll be ready by the time I'm ready to plant. To do so. As I'm doing this, I'm going to pull out any twigs or like large chunks of mulch or sphagnum that just don't suit the mix. Um, but otherwise, I just hydrated it and that's it. Alright, so our soil mix is prepping. I'm going to take my little container and I just grabbed some pea gravel off the floor of the greenhouse and I'm just going to put a thin layer on the bottom and what this will do is allow any um, condensation to not sit at the root of the plants but go down and have sort of like a, I don't know, like, I guess like a water reservoir that the soil can uptake as it needs it, but so that it's not sitting there being too wet. And I just put, a, I'm just gonna put enough to sort of cover the bottom of this thing. This is a really shallow dish. 
Now, a lot of people will use landscaping um, uh, fabric like I did under the greenhouse or like Tanner uses wire mesh. I'm just going to use some sphagnum on top of this and this is going to separate or keep the soil from mixing into that gravel as much. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to use this. If this container was deeper, it'd be a bit easier. And actually, for a container like this, the mesh would probably be a great idea, but I don't have any, so we're working with what we got here. Um, and this, again, will allow for the transfer of water, um, but hopefully not too much soil mixing. Let's do that, and then I'll take my soil, which is nice and... and uh, light and airy and also nice and damp now and put a nice thick layer on top now the nice thing in theory at least I, I don't have the practical experience yet with terrariums is that they don't require that much maintenance of course you're going to have to clean the glass um, but because they have this sort of closed loop system of the water evaporating rolling down the sides and rehydrating you don't have to water them that much uh, and you can just simply trim the plants as needed. Now, I went into this with really no plan at all. Um, so we'll have to learn together and see how it goes. I picked up one of the a popular thing around here, at least, are those little fairy gardens. Um, so I picked up some of the fairy garden plants because I think that they'll be a good size. They, they shouldn't particularly outgrow this terrarium too quickly. Um, and they all have the same soil needs meaning I wanted ones that all do well in moderately wet soil. I think I probably bought way too many plants. Um, I picked up a little compact begonia, which would flower, which I thought would be cool. I picked up a little bird's nest fern. Um, I picked up a few little lemon button ferns, um, which are just a teeny little fern. And then I picked up some miniature baby tears. Um, actually, it's Pilia depressa, tiny tears they're called. They only get they stay really short, um, so I thought we may, I may not be able to fit these in here, but we're going to get at least some of the ferns and the begonia in here. I wanted the begonia for the flowers, um, and then maybe we'll put a top dressing on, maybe we won't. Let me wash my hands real quick. Now this is a super teeny little thing, so not a whole lot is going to fit in here. I think I'm going to use the begonia for sure, so I'm going to start by... Um, taking it out of the pot and getting rid of the old soil. Let me pull up. I'll just mix it in with this. There's actually three of them in this little plant, which is cool because I kind of like to plant things in odd numbers. I don't know why. Um, but, and the only reason I'm getting rid of this soil is it's really, really dry and it's probably pretty nutritionally deplete um, from the nursery. And also, I just want to have the roots because this my bowl is kind of shallow, so I just want to get the roots planted. I don't want to have to make a giant hole for the entire um, mass of potting soil from the nursery. And again, this is a mini begonia, whose label I've already... Oh, mini begonia. Begonia tiny gem. It's supposed to only get five inches tall, gets white flowers, and it grows upright and it likes things moderately moist. So my thought was that would do well in my little terrarium here. And then I just thought these little lemon button ferns were super, super cute. Again, these are supposed to get to 12 inches tall, uh, which is substantially bigger than this, so I may end up having to trim them frequently. We'll find out together. And again, I'm getting rid of the soil uh, just so that I have to, I don't have to uh, dig as deep into my little container here. And a lot of these little tropical ferns do really, really well in terrariums because they like things really humid, and that can be difficult to duplicate um, unless you keep them in a high humidity environment like this. Now, I do have a bigger dome that I can use for this if I need to. We'll see, but I'm currently using its drip tray for my carnivorous plants. And then I have a third one of these. 
These are such adorable little plants. I think it's really uh, sometimes pretty misleading at the nursery when you go to buy plants because a lot of them are immature plants. So it's really important to take a look at the label or even Google around to make sure you're getting things um, that will actually work long term in, in the size environment you plan on providing. Those are so cute. Um, and then I, let's see. Maybe I can pull a little of this out. Let's take a look at it and see. And see if it'll fit around the edges. Wow, this is really root packed. I liked how compact it was. Some of these trailing parts, I don't think I'm going to be able to use, but I think I can um, break off little pieces like this to put at the edges, and it should look pretty nice. If not, you know, I'll find out, and we'll learn together, and I can make adjustments as needed. Um, I was originally going to put some botanicals or things in here, but I'm just not sure if I'm going to or not. Again, this was just a spur of the moment thing that I decided I wanted to make um, just to do something. And if you look online, there's like 80 million terrarium guides out there that have uh, plant suggestions and stuff. It's, it's a really popular hobby. In fact, um, in Philadelphia, there's a terrarium store that I really want to visit to check out one of these days next time I'm there. So that's what I have so far. Give it a spritz. See if we can get the lid on and we'll take a closer look. Now since I have this extra plant, I have this other um, weird glass thing sitting around. Um, that's just had some moss in it, so I'm just going to try and set that up too. Again, I'm going to put some of the rocks in there. And apparently all over my floor, which is always nice. Grab a little bit of sphagnum to put on top. And then we'll add some of our soil mix. Then I'll just stick that bird's nest plant in there just to keep it healthy until I figure out what I want to do with it. One of the neat things about terrariums, I think anyway, is sort of the layering you get um, from the different materials you use. What do I do with my soil? I think it looks really cool. the gravel, then the peat, then the, um, the soil mix that I made. Take this little bird nest fern. At least this one feels like it's been watered. Some of them were super, super dry. Again, I'm just trying to get rid of all of the old potting mix. Um, and then we'll place it inside this little guy. It's easier said than done. And 
and that can live in there for the time being. I'll probably hang it from my curtain rod, um, and then later on we'll do more. I think actually what I'm going to do with this one is just stick some of this ornamental green mossy stuff around it as like a top dressing. Um, again, this, this stuff was on clearance at my garden center. Get out of the dirt, Pepper. Um, they had a huge box of different ornamental top dressings like this. I think this is reindeer moss. So I just picked it up for to use later. And then it'll give a nice little contrast in color. And there we go. So we'll hang this one um, on my curtain rod where it'll get some sun. And then we'll put this one uh, probably by Sid's tank. But let's take a closer look for you guys. This is the little bird's nest fern. Looks kind of neat. Um, we'll have to see how well the humidity does with that giant hole. This smaller cloach has these little tiny air circulation holes, which are really nice because even though these are a closed environment, uh, it's nice to have some sort of air exchange in there. I think it looks pretty nice with those little tiny tiers at the bottom there. Then the ferns cascading around the begonia, and hopefully it'll be able to flower. And all of these plants shouldn't get much taller. So I'm hoping that they do well in here. And again, if they don't, I'll pick up a bigger jar and just set them up now. I'll probably each week or as needed, I'll come in here and I'll wipe down the glass so that the plants get the light that they need um, and so that I can see them better. But I think they're kind of cool. So this is the end result. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Um, have I made egregious errors or do you think this is going to work out well for me? Regardless, I really, really enjoy learning and trying new things, so I think that's, you know, something something to be said for that alone. Um, I'm going to set this in a spot that gets some filtered sun and see how it does. The bird's nest fern I hung by my window and doors, which is next to the air plant um, arrangement that I made quite a while back that's doing super well. Uh, as always, thanks for your continued support. Um, Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more projects like this, and stay tuned for more videos.